Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So we're going to start out tonight with the Bitcoin chart here. The reason why is because we just recently had a very big move percentage wise in Bitcoin. Uh, this is a long term chart, so I'm, I'm going to pull it into the minute chart, but you can see on the daily chart here that there's a significant trend in place. Bitcoin made its low. Again, this is the Huobi, and I'm going to compare the others. But uh, this is the Huobi chart. You can see a move from 1238 uh, from September 2015 to where we are above 4000. So a three to four fold move in the value of Bitcoin in that currency. Now, the, the first question you have to ask, let's get to the minute chart here. The first question you have to ask is, what is the news? Uh, why is the market moving so quickly? What happened? So the first question I want to answer is, where did the action come from? And really, the only way you can tell that is by trying to determine which market is the primary mover and which market is the arbitrage. So the way I want you to think about this is look down here at this date, October 11th. Now, you remember we had the debates. That was the event that was last night. And... Uh, I'm going to go through the Bitfinex, the BTCE, and the Bitstamp. Basically, Huobi is the major exchange, does the most volume of the Chinese exchanges. And uh, there are other Chinese exchanges, but that's going to be the major one. You can see we're selling off now. Uh, Bitfinex is the major futures chart. For, uh, futures market for Bitcoin because you can trade on margin. But again, uh, Bitfinex recently made their users take a haircut. And so that questions the validity of that exchange. BTCE is a Russian exchange. And then Bitstamp is mainly an exchange where you can uh, deposit dollars and get Bitcoin. So the big question is going to be, where did the action occur? So I want you to keep an eye down here at this October 11th date, and I'm going to go through the different exchanges. So you can see on Bitfinex, most of the volume came in, a little volume came in here, and then the move came in there. On BTCE, we really didn't have much happening early on. And then on Bitstamp, we had most of it happening right there you can see on the October but again back to the Huobi exchange you can see that a big uh, buying breakout occurred last night during the debates when the debates were going on what does that mean well the first thing you want to look for is what markets moved at the same time so the big move again happened tonight it's happening right now. And what would you say goes along with that? Well, the first thing I checked was gold or silver or the euro, but none of those lined up. There were no action in those markets. But the one market that I found that was tied to this move is the yuan, the US dollar yuan chart. So. If we make a comparison here with, this goes back to, let's get to, uh, let's see, on the three minutes, that's a little too far. Um, actually, no, we want to go to the 15 minute, 30 minute, which takes us back to about October 1st on this chart. And then on the Yuan chart, we get to about the 30th of September. So that's the closest we can get. But you can see if we draw in trend lines here and where we are at roughly there. So you can see that those are the two closest comparisons that we have a devaluation of the Chinese currency and a increase in the value of Bitcoin, a rapid uh, move 
in the value of Bitcoin. So what's behind this? Well, I did a lot of digging and it's hard to do because you want to try to find news that's relevant and this is just a guess, but the article that I found is this article here, Clinton attacks Trump for b bizarre debate. So this is post-debate and you can see that the, the big move didn't come, let's get to the one minute here, uh, the, the big move did not come yesterday during the debate, although the initial breakout came during the debate. And then we had the follow through tonight uh, with this big, big move. So I'm going to go through this article and then point out the main thing here. This is Hillary coming after Trump after the debate. Detroit Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton wasted little time Monday in attacking her Republican opponent using her Wayne State University appearance to rebut a number of Donald Trump's claims during their second debate Sunday night. Quote, anybody that anybody see that debate last night? You've never seen anything like that, she said seconds after the beyond capacity crowd roared their welcome at the Matai Center in Midtown Detroit. Donald Trump spent his time attacking when he should have been apologizing. She went on to use words like bizarre to describe the Republican nominee's various claims throughout the debate. What she didn't directly address was Trump's controversial comments about sexually assaulting women that were captured on video and audio in 2005 and became public Friday. The first speaker of the event, Detroit Mayor Mike Dugan, took a sly shot at Trump's reference to his comments being simply locker room talk. Hillary is speaking for all the people who aren't in those country club locker rooms. Wow. Uh, unbelievable. Clinton told the crowd that her campaign is winning more and more support, not just from independents, but also Republicans. Since the release of the 2005 tape, a number of Republicans include former presidential candidate U.S. Senator John McCain and Mission uh, Michigan Lieutenant Governor Brian Kelly have withdrawn their endorsements but have said they will still not vote for Clinton. Detroit resident Barry Marshall of Detroit said after the speech he wished Clinton has spent more time on Trump's treatment of women. Quote, I don't think there's anyone out there who believes him when he says he's changed and he's a different person. My dad always told me that who you were when you thought no one was looking is who you really were. He's a sexist pig and there's no way around that. The one controversy Clinton spent time on was Trump's taxes. The New York Times reported Trump took nearly $916 million loss in 1995, likely hasn't paid federal income tax since. That didn't sit well with Clinton. Clinton, quote, I believe everyone in this room has paid more income tax than Trump has, she said. After attacking Trump, Clinton made sure to feed red meat to her crowd made up of college students and union workers. She took Trump to task for his company's business practices, including buying cheap steel from China to build his skyscrapers. Quote, I do have some advice for Donald Trump. He wants to make America great again. Start by buying American steel. So that's going to be the key phrase here. Now, we know that Trump has been a big China basher. We know that Trump has uh, blamed these trade packs for the loss of American jobs. Uh, Trump is not a traditional conservative in the sense that conservatives tend to believe in free trade. I'm not saying that what's gone on between the U.S. and other countries on the, under these trade deals is free trade. It's not free trade. It's, uh, it's uh, rigged trade. But uh, the main point here is that we now have Hillary Clinton coming out saying that uh, Donald Trump should be buying American steel rather than Chinese steel. That's the essence of what she's saying. Now, we know that Trump is running on a sort of a conservative protectionist platform. And as I said before, protectionism is not traditionally a conservative viewpoint, but it's a populist viewpoint and it can resonate during a populist slash conservative candidacy. But now we have Hillary Clinton coming out and also saying the same sort of thing. So it's pretty clear that 
I think the Chinese can see uh, probably a lot more clearer than the Americans can see that it's going to be the case that regardless of who gets in, China is going to take the brunt of this. So how does this all shake out? Well, uh, we can see that we've had a move here in the Chinese Yuan. It will pull out to the daily chart. I'm going to show you. Uh, you can see this little spike here that occurred actually the end of trading yesterday and then the trading today. You can see that is a technical breakout from a kind of uh, pennant formation uh, in a trend that goes back to a bottom of 2014. Pulling out to the weekly chart, you can see that we've got this uh, pattern here where we have this technical breakout in the value of the US dollar versus the Chinese Yuan. In other words, the, the Yuan is weakening against the dollar and the trend is continuing. This is not a trend I thought. I actually originally drew my trend lines in like uh, the way the trend was. I thought for sure that this would correct and it hasn't. Now if you remember we had this series of uh, port explosions in China when China started to devalue. Um, many would say in the conspiracy camp that was a warning shot. It, it didn't work. China's continued to devalue their currency and this is a breakout in that trend. Uh, not a significant breakout, but a breakout that actually aligns with the Bitcoin chart. Now, I wanted to talk about the significance of this. Uh, we know that I showed you already, if you do the comparisons between these markets, uh, we know these markets are arbitraged because it's so easy to arbitrage them. It's not easy to exchange the currencies, but it's very easy to exchange the cryptocurrencies. Uh, right now, you could go over to the Huobi exchange, and if you're uh, wanting to deposit Bitcoin, there's no problem doing that. It would be a lot more difficult to link a bank account and to trade in the currency, but to just get the coins on there, that's not that hard. So we already know there's a number of people doing arbitrage and you can see the price uh, alignment is fairly tight. We've seen price differentials in the various Bitcoin exchanges that run from very large percentages, uh, dollar numbers of say $50 when significant moves were occurring. But you can see here the tightness is pretty good. We've got 638 in China and that's the leading price. We've got 636 on Bitfinex. We've got 630 in Russia, 629 at Bitstamp. But uh, the rally is continuing and I just wanted to talk about the significance of the fact that uh, Bitcoin is actually the number one indicator of the reaction of the Chinese to this news. So if I'm correct, and I'm not certain that I am, but if I am correct that this reaction in Bitcoin is actually a reaction to what could have been uh, what they speculate as a result of last night's debate, and then, of course, Hillary Clinton mentioning potential trade restrictions because um, realistically, if you're going to talk about buying U.S. steel, then it's going to be very difficult to convince U.S. manufacturers to purchase U.S. steel without tariffs. Uh, there's really no other way to do that with the currency being the way it is and the prices being the way they are. You can't just convince American manufacturers who deal with steel to pay a higher price for some patriotic reason. But we know that businesses are in business uh, to make a profit. If they weren't in business to make a profit, they wouldn't be in business anymore. So businesses are going to buy the cheapest product just like you will when you go to the store. If you are looking for a certain item and uh, you either have the exact same item in different stores or you have a comparable item, uh, something that basically serves all the same purposes 
and has the same value, you're going to purchase the cheapest item. That's just human nature. There's no reason why people are going to rob themselves. The same thing is true with people who buy steel for their manufacturing. They're going to buy the cheapest steel they can get their hands on. So the only way you can really change that scenario in a short-term way, obviously in a long-term way, you can change that by actually changing either the regulatory or tax structure of the country that you're talking about. Politicians obviously are loath to change those things because those things have political impact, such as unions and uh, all other manner of political repercussions. But one easy way that you can change those business decisions is by the imposition of tariffs. Now, nobody has specifically mentioned tariffs, but it's pretty clear if you look at what Trump has been saying and if you look now with what Hillary Clinton is saying in this article, uh, I think the Chinese are a lot brighter than Americans and they are figuring out what the tea leaves are reading and that is that both of the candidates are probably going to institute some type of tariffs against Chinese products. That is going to mean a potential slowdown in China. Uh, it could mean a potential crash because the economy has been so hot for so long. And so what is so fascinating about this is that the reaction that we see to the news, the real market reaction to the news comes in Bitcoin. It comes in the Chinese Yuan, but it also comes in Bitcoin. So that's a confirmation to all of us that Bitcoin is a real currency. This is a, a price rise resulting from many Chinese people uh, reading the tea leaves, pardon the pun, uh, thinking that things are going to change now in this election. Both candidates are openly admitting that they see China as an enemy and that U.S. manufacturers have to be protected. Basically, both candidates are coming out as protectionist, and China is reacting. The most fascinating thing is that the way China is reacting is not pushing up silver, not pushing up gold, but buying cryptocurrencies. That means that Bitcoin is a real currency. That means the Chinese believe that it's a real currency, and they're acting in their interest and that's a very, very bullish sign for Bitcoin. And we'll talk to you next time.